Hi guys, welcome to my retro room. Inside the retro room, it's um, about 9.15, uh, sorry, 9.20 in uh, Adelaide at the moment. So on the weekend, I went to the, on Monday, sorry, oh, last day of the long weekend, I went to the uh, Adelaide Comic Toy and Game and Collectibles Fair. Caught up with my friend Darren from, um, what's it called again? I forgot what his comic business is, but makes really cool comics. And uh, he was there, had some laser discs for sale. I'd been through his pile once before, but obviously there was some new stuff in there I hadn't seen before. So let's just give you a quick look around the place, if you haven't seen everything in here as of yet. So, Betamax VHS stuff here. Well, this is all the stuff I've kept out of my 3,500 tape collection all the road shows lots of stuff plenty of laser discs of course about 250 or so some nice laminated posters and non-laminated pyro posters all sorts of goodies critters old beta max machines and commodore amigas so plenty of uh, horror stuff here and my players let's take a look it's a bit dark here i actually might just go turn the light on sorry about that guys Let's go turn the uh, second light on. So, there we go. Sorry about the shakiness. I must get myself a tripod or something else for this. So, okay. My Pioneer CLD 2950. My non-working D750. I think it's got a power supply issue. The Xbox 360 Star Wars Edition. Commodore 128D. CLD D515, which I was using last night, and of course I also have got have got a Kenwood LVD K9200 karaoke machine. I like this thing; it's pretty good, not bad. Now the laser disc I did manage to get. There's my pile there. Plus, uh, I've got a few more on display over here. Japanese discs, Monster Squad, personal favourite group shows, and Terminator US Howling, long that the Howling. This is the uh, widescreen collector's edition. Then we have the American or the UK version of Big Trouble in Little China, Cujo, and the Criterion widescreen edition of Halloween. And of course, I also do have my Jaws stuff up there as well, and down the bottom here. Disco Visions. So, what did I get from Darren? Let's have a look. So here we go. Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. I watched this back in the 90s on VHS. The Big Blue version long, I think that means. Um, this movie I've never watched. I've seen the trailer about 28 times on VHS. Always wondered about it and I thought, you know what, for 15, 15 bucks I'm buying it. It's a 162 minute version. So... There we go. And, of course, an 80s classic with the beautiful Kim Cattrall mannequin. Again, all Japanese laser discs. Let's have a look at the other side. Two of these out of the three have got little, little like, um, cardboard brochures. Like that, as you can see, all in Japanese. On the inside, I really love this film. It's really good. Now Harley uh, looks like it's been printed very nicely actually. It's very, very nice and glossy. There's the uh, disc. The Herald release from Japan. I don't know how many distributors there were in, in Japan back in the day. But there we go. There's my latest collection. There's one thing that you may not know I, that I have and may not care about it because it's not a very good format. But I had, I had more, but I actually have got one CED of Blue Thunder, uh, one of my favourite films from the 80s with my favourite actor of all time, Roy Scheider. Gene Hackman's probably a second favourite. Um, I've got this. I've got the Japanese laser disc and the American laser disc as well, plus the Australian uh, VHS, which has the scene that was cut from all other versions where the... What's her name? Um, where is she? 
Candy Clark, she drives her car, she's escaping the cops and she drives down an alleyway and literally goes up against the wall, goes completely over sideways and then basically comes back back on her, on her, uh, on all fours. Um, that scene apparently has been, according to, to the Blu-ray I've got, has got, uh, was cut from every other version but the Australian one's got it in there. So, amazing. So there we go, there's a CED for you. Now if these were released in, not to go on about these too much, but if these happened to be released in 1968, I reckon, or even 70, they would have been a big hit. Um, unfortunately, they started developing it, I think, in the 50s, late 50s, went through the 60s, and they couldn't get the runtime. a bunch of other reasons why, as people who know more about these things than I do. But basically, by the time it came out, 1978, it was pretty much... You know, VHD from Japan was actually superior, it was more reliable. It wasn't maybe superior in picture quality, but it ran very, very smoothly and it didn't jump and skip and carry on. And they just they just did it better. Um, you know, so they, they just did. And LaserDisc was out the same year anyway, so it was technically not much more superior. But by the time, like, you know, the early, the mid-80s came around, LaserDisc were definitely superior. So there we go. That's my latest in here. From the retro room, one day I will show you all of my lasers, and we'll, uh, yeah, I'll show you all the ones I have got. There's people that got way more than I have. I like to buy more, but I think this is pretty much another maybe ten or twenty would be enough for me, I reckon. American VHS re-releases. Re re uh, Bought a bunch of movies back in the early two thousands on the internet, and uh, of course there's video hoarders. The VHS guys, me on the back, although I'm a lot thinner and a lot healthier now. <laughs> I go to the gym five days a week, so I'm smashing it. And adjust your tracking. There you go. So, there we go, guys. Oh, and there's another Jaws over there too, of course, the signature collection. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you're all having a great, uh, great week and getting to watch some good films. I'll catch you guys later.